And now on to a mystery. More than 40 years in the making, two law enforcement agencies are trying to put a name to a face. Tonight we have a behind the scenes look at their attempts to identify Jane Doe and we'll explain what could crack this cold case. Here's News 5's Tracy Carlos with the story you will only see here on 5. This is the U.S. Marshals! The United States Marshals. We have a warrant for your arrest! Are in the business of tracking down fugitives. Come to the front door! But seven years ago, Congress expanded their reach. Many of the things that we do to find fugitives would help find missing persons. Congress passed the Justice for Victims Act. The uh, act gave us the authority to look for missing juveniles, but at the same time, not only were we finding these high-risk runaways, active cases we were working, we also discovered that there were a lot of people that were reported missing as juveniles that had, had not yet been found. Cases from years ago where leads led nowhere and cases went cold. U.S. Marshal Pete Elliott told me in the midst of one cold case, investigators found themselves right in the middle of another. Marshals were looking into the case of a 22-year-old woman from Avon Lake who disappeared in 1978 when what they found inside this police file unleashed many questions. It all started because a detective many years ago kept this in his file, right? From many, many years ago and kept those files. So that's where it all started with a teletype. A teletype from the Sandusky Police Department to other area police departments detailing the discovery of a body. It was March 30th, 1980, when the badly decomposed body of a woman was found just offshore by two people walking. They believe she was approximately 20 to 30 years old. The body was discovered. She was a white female. In the 1200 block of Cedar Point Road. She was wearing a cocktail style party dress. Sandusky detectives leads led nowhere back in 1980. They checked multiple cities for missing women. Detroit, Cleveland, Toledo, um, like I said previously, Canada, nothing, none of them unfortunately matched our Jane Doe. Who was the woman? And now more than 40 years later, where was her body? Danger. U.S. Marshals Danger. discovered Danger. Cuyahoga Danger. County did the Danger. autopsy. Danger. They found the original records that showed the body was sent back to Erie County. But where? The cold cases are extremely difficult to piece together. A newspaper article led U.S. Marshals Senior Inspector Bill Bolden and a team of investigators here to this funeral home and records that unlocked one mystery. I've got records going all the way back to all the prior funeral homes that have been associated with the Groff Funeral Home um, dating back to the late 1800s. The records of the Jane Doe from 1980 held one key to this cold case. From those records, investigators discovered the body was buried here in the cemetery. The plot simply marked Jane Doe. Meantime, Sandusky police had the cold case, but with the new information from the marshals, they first thought the body might be that of a missing Erie County woman who disappeared around the same time. She was of similar stature and build as our Jane Doe. So along with what the marshals had, along with what that was, um, the coroner uh, authorized the exhumation of the Jane Doe's body who was buried at Sand Hill Cemetery. DNA taken from the body did not match the Erie County woman. Further testing is needed to see if it matches the Avon Lake case, but investigators don't believe it is either of the missing women, leaving two law enforcement agencies with two missing women, one body with no name, and three mysteries. She was somebody from somewhere, uh, so you know it's going to be our our goal to figure out who that was. Now that DNA is being analyzed at a lab. It's a game changer. Police are now banking on forensic genealogy to unlock this mystery. DNA technology didn't exist back in 1980 like it does today. Sandusky police say the biggest clue to identifying Jane Doe up until this point has been this dress. Somebody knows who she is I and mean, she's wearing a cocktail dress. That's you know, a very a party dress. The marshals don't believe the woman fits any of the cold cases they're currently working. I don't believe it's going to solve our missing person case from 1978, but it is going to solve a missing person case of whoever this individual was. Old fashioned that's police okay. work coupled with new technology. Hopefully that, you know, there is still a person that's still looking for the, for Jane Doe and with this technology that we're working on, hopefully we can actually bring some peace to them. And answers for two law enforcement agencies trying to put a name to a face decades later. In Sandusky, Tracy Carlos, News 5.